Hello, everyone. It's Susan Gerbic from Psychics Explained. Oh, and Hamilton is there with us. He wanted to make sure you knew them. Right, Ham? So, <laughs> so I want to continue with the videos in the playlist for Operation Dill Pickle. I have quite a few videos to show. The one I'm going to show you today is one I have shown to a very few uh, people when I was doing talks through the last few months, I think from May till now, I've shown it to a very small group of people to get their feedback. And when I showed the video, it was, um, I showed it from the beginning to the end with no cuts whatsoever, because I want people to understand what it is like to attend one of these private readings with someone who is a, um, in an intimate um, venue where they think that they're not actually being, re well, they know they're being recorded because the medium sent me the recording. Um, so we all know they're being recorded, but they think they're in a private area with just friends. And so I think that that's interesting. And I, I wanted people to see the full seven minutes of the reading in full with no breaks because it's really hard to watch. It's very intimate and intense. I'm not sure I'm going to do that to you guys today. I think I'm going to break it up because there's so many points that need to be made throughout the video. And people have made a lot of comments to me about what happens in this video that I think I want to share that as feedback. Okay, so before I get to that seven minute recording, this is the recording with Trudy. Um, I just want to do a little brief just a brief uh, update of, not update, but who is Lady Phyllis and why am I picking on Lady Phyllis? Okay, so the reason why she came to my attention was because Thomas John made a video saying, if you can't get a reading with me, go to Lady Phyllis. I totally trust her. I trained her and so on. And you will see that video, that endorse, endorsement of Thomas John on my first video in this playlist of Operation Dill Pickle. I include the entire video. The other reason is, is because I was looking for a medium for a future project that I was probably going to be endeavoring in, that we needed a new psychic medium to, to investigate, to feature. So I've been looking around to see who that might be. And we thought possibly Lady Phyllis would be the one. And I was looking for somebody who has, who has who does hot readings because hot readings are a lot more likely to prove that they're hot reading and in lady phyllis's case as we can see she's not doing traditional hot reading she's cold reading but she is hot reading because she has she has a relationship with the people she's reading for so she's just talking about things they've already discussed in other readings or workshops and that will become very evident in the the video you're going to see today and lady phyllis admit admits that she has a relationship with this woman so one of the things i want to point out is that lady phyllis's real last name is okum o-k-o-n uh, she is tied to these two brothers that have a youtube channel instagram channel and other uh, venues into this world of the psychic medium. It's called the Oakham Brothers. It's a YouTube channel. They have 4,000 subscribers. They have 880 videos and they have been around since 2019 and they don't really have a lot of views. They seem to have stopped recording. I, I haven't seen anything uploaded for a year. A lot of the videos that they've done recently, well, recently in the last year are golf, mobile podcast, threads, airline nightmares, talk movies. And then before that, it was all interviews with people who are who claim to be psychic mediums. And they broke down the videos into little tiny chunks of like one minute, two minutes, three minutes, and so on. Digestible chunks. But then there's also a longer interview with the person. So possibly they cut them into little chunks so that they would hopefully go viral, be get more views. I don't know why they did that, but um, to each his own, they get like 40, 50, 70 views. And they have many, many, many different 
mediums they've interviewed, and including their mother, Lady Phyllis. So there's there's a lot of people on here I'd love to explore. They're, these are all psychics I've never heard of before. Possibly they will be psychic mediums that maybe will become featured playlists on this channel or other articles I write. So one of the things I really wanted to show you, and uh, Lady Phyllis has blocked me on Facebook, and I was not previously blocked. I was when I made the very first reading. Uh, Operation Dill Pickle, the first video I released, I tagged her on Facebook because that's usually what I do to let them know that they have had a video come out on them in case they don't have a Google search or something like that because, well, they're not psychic, so they can't know that there's a video out of them. So I'd have to actually tag them. And when I do that, um, you know, it's like heads up, hey, I've here you are. I, I usually hashtag them if I think that they can't get a tag because of Facebook, um, has, they blocked me, but she has blocked me. So that's another way of me knowing that she has seen this videos and is aware that I'm doing this series on her. I don't know why they block me. It's, it's kind of silly because it just makes me more interested in them. Lots of psychics have blocked me. Tyler Henry blocked me from the very first article I wrote at him back in 2016 when he was just starting out. I mean, he was barely starting out. He, you know, I was able to tag him. I was able to uh, interact with him on Twitter and Facebook. Boom. As soon as that article comes out and he has a day or so, I'm blocked. Um, lots of psychics have done that to me, psychic mediums. And it's, I, I just don't get it because obvious I would think they'd want to see that I'm interested in them, that I'm releasing more videos. I mean, why would you not want to have content? It's not as if I can't post on their, their social media. It's, it's super simple. As you can see here, I am. <laughs> Maybe they're not tech heavy, heavy people and they don't quite get it, but, uh, Come on, man. It is just so, it's so obvious whenever you block me that you're sensitive to this and you don't want me getting in contact with your readers or your followers or whatever, but I could still do that. And as I said, it makes me more interested. Okay. This is Lady Phyllis's website that we're looking at. And I'm just going to go over a couple small little things on here that she's heavy on the uh, workshops and selling things besides reading. So she's done books. Uh, you could take a class on how to write and publish a book. Here she is on Patreon, uh, mentorship. Um, I wonder if it'll give us a price. What do you guys think? Um, meet with me twice a month, every month, and talk about all things mediumship and spirituality. Hey, I wonder if that's I, something I could do. I don't see. Oh. 20 bucks a month, $19.99 a month for her inner circle. So they meet the first Wednesday of every month at 7.30 Eastern time for an hour. All right, what a deal, 20 bucks a month. I could have a nice conversation with Lady Phyllis. What do you think? Uh, emergency reading available within two days. So for people who are extremely desperate to get a hold of their dead um, loved ones, you can get these. Oh, for 30 minutes, for $30, uh, $300. So, okay. Um, here's for 60 minutes is $400. If you want to go up to 75 minutes with two people in the Zoom call, you can you can do that for $500. I wonder how many she actually sells. She's in Long Island, New York. So you can get an in-person reading and those run about $400 for an hour for two people. Uh, $700 for 120 minutes. I wonder, I wonder if I should do that. What do you guys think? Should I send somebody in to Long, Long Island and have a reading by Lady Phyllis? Questions, bulk packages, buy more and save more, uh, gallery readings and so on. So there's, so she, she also offers a lot of these workshops. I've seen a lot of that and maybe I'll cover them later. Okay. Now this is interesting because I believe that she had, um, she had a long, long, marriage with her husband and because she was in grief um, over 50 years when she was married to him she's in grief as most people are who who venture into this world of mediumship i mean not the not those people on tv who you see all the time that's a different animal i'm talking about these lower level not popular mediums 
And what they do is they, a lot of the time, they enter into this trade through the mediumship classes because they're taught everybody is a medium. So all you got to do is pay enough, attend enough classes, and you will be able to see your power. So what happened is her husband died, and in her grief, she wanted to reach out to him and have uh, communication with him. Now, this is what's really interesting, that she took classes in the hopes of communicating with him. Now, that's fascinating. The mediums do that a lot. They say that, um, you know, buy my workshop, attend our classes, uh, learn the lessons, buy my book, and you will learn how you can be in contact with your loved one. And then she says that her husband jumped in to serve as a guide, helping her connect with others, with uh, their loved ones. So what's going on here is we've been told that, I mean, this is not like Beetlejuice where there's a book of rules, right? We've been told that there are rules that you cannot go and um, give yourself a reading. You can't. Um, you know, this goes from, I mean, Sylvia Brown was very famous for saying this, is that she couldn't see her family members or anything close to her uh, readings for her loved ones that are very close. And this is an out for them to be able to say, yeah, my life get, got messed up. Um, I made bad decisions. My child had made bad decisions. And I wasn't able to seek guidance because I can't, I can't see what's happening around me. They use that excuse all the time, and it is just an out. But in Lady Phyllis's case, and I've seen this with other mediums, like I said, that are lower level, um, non, not famous mediums, is they say the same thing, is that they're getting readings so that they can communicate with their loved ones who will help them with guidance and help them connect with other people. So which is it, you know, is it that you can really con connect to the family members around you and you can get guidance and so on, or... You can't see the loved ones around you because then you don't have the excuse why you were in a car accident or why somebody got really sick and you didn't know about it or something bad happens to you because then you won't be able to make the excuse that why didn't your loved one who's giving you guidance and helping you connect to all these other people, why didn't they warn you? Okay, so we see that it's um, they can't seem to make up their mind, which is the truth. Uh, the truth is whatever they feel like making up at that point. So there is no truth. There is no rule book. Like I said, there is no Beetlejuice book, nothing like that at all. This is just stuff that these rules that they make up that are convenient to them, that apply to them. And I mean, this nonsense of, well, maybe it applies to her, but not to these people. I mean, come on, you guys, at a certain point, let's stop playing pretend and let's get to the facts that there is no evidence that anybody can communicate with the dead. Done. So um, the other things I want to mention about Lady Phyllis is I don't know if she, if she knows what she's doing. I do believe she's probably an ethical woman who, if she is doing this and knows that she sometimes has to cheat, that she's doing it thinking she's helping people. Okay. I, I tend to be a, a bit... Um, cited towards people like that because I don't want to believe the worst in people. So I kind of think that's what's going on is that even if she has to cheat sometimes, that she believes that the ends justify the means and she's giving more people help than she is harming people. All right. So I want to go um, back to her website because this is very important. And I want to make sure that if, if you're interested in, in Lady Phyllis or the series I'm doing, Operation Dill Pickle, You'll find a playlist and you'll see a little bit more information each time you watch one of these videos. But I want to get down to the contact information and I probably should make a, a screenshot of this so that I can blow it up so you can actually read it because it is in the small print. So let's do this so I can show it's on the website first and then I will uh, blow it up and read it to you. So in case you're just listening to this, Oops, I don't want to show that. I want to go to here in case you're just listening to me. As I've been told, some people like to listen to me. So at the very end of the, the, the video, the video of her website is this contact Phyllis. And then down here has her phone number, her email, and it has a disclaimer. Okay, so let me show you that disclaimer. 
and let me share a different screen so that I can show you the disclaimer and I'll show it to you large. And I find this very interesting as I find most things because I'm strange that way. And here's your disclaimer. Let me pull that up. Sorry, folks. on this screen so you can see it okay now that'll that'll large enlargen enlargen okay sorry far sorry folks okay so let's read this now that you can see it better this is the contact phyllis so this is a disclaimer it says right here disclaimer and according to the disclaimer it says any mediumship reading provided to you is intended for entertainment purposes only and is subject to your personal interpretation. Readings are not meant to be and should not be interpreted as financial, oh, medical, financial, legal, psychological, or career advice. If you have a serious problem, you should seek the advice of a licensed professional. By booking a reading, you acknowledge and agree to the terms of service. Right. So this is my premise is that disclaimer is on there for a reason, but to to protect her in legal reasons. But does it hold? Is that what's really happening when you get into these private readings with Lady Phyllis and she doesn't, she thinks she's with friends and there's a very small intimate group. Is that what's actually happening? And I give to you that I do not think that is what is actually happening. She can put on her website, it's entertainment only. But I think in a court of law, if it was needed to be proved that this, these women who are here getting the readings do not see this as entertainment. And at no time does Lady Phyllis ever in any of the readings I've ever seen say, hey, just a reminder at the beginning of her readings, this is for entertainment only. This is just, I'm just, you interpret it as you want. It's just like a horoscope you'd read in the newspaper. No, at no time does she ever do that. She always goes through it and says, I am speaking to dead people. And that's always what happens. And so because I have these videos and, and able to do this, if we were ever to need to have proof that she is not abiding by her disclaimer on her website, we have evidence of it because I think any jury would be able to see that and say, obviously she has a disclaimer there for protection but that is not what's actually happening because these are behind the scenes. And you'll see that in this video. And, and I'm going to ask that question multiple times too as we go. With the reading with Trudy, is this entertainment? Does she give legal, financial, uh, medical advice of any kind? Right? Um, and the idea that you should seek the advice of a licensed professional, which is something I've always said, in an emergency, well, she has an emergency reading that you can get and you know, charges you $400 for it. It's right there on her website. So what's the deal with providing an emergency reading to somebody if this is just entertainment and you're supposed to interpret it as you please? No, uh-uh. You don't get to play both of those cards, lady. This is, this is not how it works. It is, uh, you are obviously not abiding by your disclaimer on your website. So let's, let's just say that. All right. So let's get to the reading. Um, this is a difficult reading to watch and I have blurred uh, Trudy's face. You'll be able to hear her. I have no idea what Trudy's last name is, nor do I ever want to contact her. Um, you'll hear her voice. You can make a decision of where you think she might live based on her accent. Um, I, because it's easier for me to blur more than one, uh, Lady Phyllis will also be blurred. If you want to see Lady Phyllis, what she looks like when she's giving a reading, you can see some of my other videos that are unblurred. And they're unblurred because, you know, I was the subject. So um, she is cold reading, but not in, um, what, but with the familiarity of the hot reading, as I said. But what... Um, what we're missing when you're doing a Zoom call, when you're watching a Zoom call, is we're watching it in speaker view. So keep that in mind. Like you're watching me right now, you see me on the screen speaking to you. But when there's more than one subject, 
when the person speaks, one video goes on and one video goes off. And you see these people like this, right? But when you are the person recording and you're recording the interview with these people, both people are on the screen usually. So you can see yourself and you can see the speaker. So this is a gallery view, but a lot of times they record it in speaker view. What I'm trying to tell you is that if I'm reading another person and we're both on the screen, I can see her all the time. I can see her expressions, her emotions. Um, does her does her eyes start to water? I can see that, though the recording shows that it is speaker view. Boom, one, one, like that. Okay. So you, you'll notice this with all readings that are done over Zoom with uh, Matt Frazier or whomever, is that it there's more happening on the screen that the medium can see, but we don't see it as viewers. So keep that in mind. So when you're cold reading somebody and a person is um, there either in person or whatever, but it's videoed, we only see what the camera records. And I just did this with a, with a, a video I did on uh, Tyler Henry <clears throat> that it was recorded for the TV show, The Talk. And we see Tyler, and then we'll see a picture of the person, uh, Jerry O'Connell, that he's he's giving a reading for. And then you'll see a shot with them both sitting there on the screen at the same time. And then another shot will be just Tyler scribbling on a pad. And then another shot will just be Jerry. And then another shot would be um, Tyler. Okay, that's, we're, we're limited to what we see. But what we can't see is what they don't show us. But Tyler's there in the room with Jerry. And so if Jerry's sitting here nodding his head in agreement, so Tyler can see that, we, we don't know that because it's not on the screen. So what is missing? Remember that. What is missing? When you watch my channel, what is missing that we should be able to see? So there. All right. So let's go over to Trudy. Um, I should ask you guys to like and share my videos. I really would appreciate comments. Um, I do have one of Lady Phyllis's... Um, fans is uh been um <laughs> writing me comments it's been quite interesting reading the non comments that they're giving me it's mainly like uh-uh she gave me a reading and she's awesome and you're just an awful horrible evil person with the, with you know this dark soul and you're not i mean that's basically what it equivalent equivalent to and this is must be a good friend of lady phyllis because it was right after i put out the first video and tagged Lady Phyllis. Lady Phyllis blocks me and then here her commenter shows up in the um, on my feed and they've left me like eight or nine comments already. Um, I keep asking, why don't, has Lady Phyllis helped solve any crimes? And they say, well, they psychics help mediums all the time. And it's like, no, they don't. Give me some evidence. And they're like, well, I Googled it and here's the links, you know, and but the links are disappeared. And so you must have deleted. I mean, it's just really juvenile and you can't have conversations with these people. So it's somebody, I doubt it's Lady Phyllis. I'm sure it's one of her fans, her her Uber fans that she's kind of said, oh, this person is being so mean to me. He's just in Gerbic. And um, how dare she, she review my readings because, you know. <sighs> The, the lack of evidence is interesting. So, ready for Trudy? Okay, I will interrupt a couple times. It's seven minutes long. I'll, I'll interrupt and we'll have some feedback. Please leave me feedback. I really appreciate it. Uh, this this is um, an interesting conversation that you and I are having to be able to understand more about the world of mediumship, especially what's going on in these small readings. Okay. So... Hello. Okay. Very sophisticated over here at Catnip Corners, how I do this stuff. Okay. Share the sound and share the right thing. So we're going to see Trudy. Not this first blurry thing. That's just something that I didn't cut out because. Um... Hello. How you doing, Trudy? I'm doing okay. Okay. Is something going on with your feet? Uh, yeah, they bother me a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I want you to go to the doctor. You know that. 
Uh huh. Yeah, and it's it's circulatory, right? It's circulation, but something going on with the toes, with your toe. Is there is, is there arthritis in your toes or something? I don't know if it's arthritis. All I know is they swell up a little bit. Yeah, he wants you to make sure you ta you're taking care of that. Okay. All right. Okay. And um, you're troubled about something. Something is bothering you. Okay, so let's stop right there. Seven minutes. So seven minutes left with those 39 seconds in. All right. So she is giving medical advice. Now it doesn't sound like much. She's saying, is there something wrong with your feet? Is there, is your, he wants you, in other words, your husband wants you because she's read for Trudy multiple times and she will admit that in, in a minute, but he, he says there's something wrong with your feet and you need to go get that checked out and it's arthritis or something. Okay. So it sounds totally, totally benign, right? Something you would tell your friends if you said, you know, you've been complaining about your feet, how are your feet doing, or I see that you're limping, or it looks like you're having some trouble there. You know, what's going on with your feet? Okay, no big deal, right? But it actually is. Because what happens is what is missing? So if Trudy thinks that she is in touch with her husband, um, her dear departed husband that she misses, if she thinks that she's getting a reading by Lady Phyllis, who she obviously trusts, Lady Phyllis would tell her if there was something seriously wrong. So if Trudy has cancer or she, she has the beginnings of diabetes or she has um, heart problems or something like that, how do we know that Trudy isn't believing that Lady Phyllis would have told her? So why bother going to have that those things checked on? Why get your mammogram? Why get your colonoscopy? Why get you know these um, um, your heart checked? Why go for your physical if you know that you're going to see your psychic later and your psychic will tell you if there's something wrong, right? Like when Mark Edward went to go, had we had a reading with Thomas John, who trained Lady Phyllis, by the way. Um, the bait we fed him was that Mark's was worried about heart problems because his father had had heart problems. But what, what he didn't tell Mark is that Mark was at the beginning of prostate cancer. Mark really did have prostate cancer and did not know it when he had that reading with Thomas John. Mark Edward just died a couple months ago. So maybe if we'd had early intervention, we might have been able, been able to um, catch the prostate cancer early. But now Mark didn't believe that Thomas John was going to see his uh, see any kind of health issues. We didn't believe that. And of course, no way. But Trudy does. Trudy is going to see this psychic getting getting. Hopefully this person is going to tell her these things. So we don't know if Trudy is going to go to a doctor and talk about her feet. We don't know. So Lady Phyllis giving her saying you should go to the doctor and get your feet checked out and see if you have arthritis. No, that's not a pass. That is legal. That is medical advice she's giving her by not giving her medical advice. Do you see what I'm saying? Okay, so that's, that's, I'm not giving her a pass. And I think that if Trudy did have something seriously wrong with her and it was not caught in time, this video would be able to show that the reason why she didn't go get her, um, her checkups, her mammogram or cervix exam or colonoscopy or whatever is because she knew that the psychic would have told her. Now, I know, I know nobody's going to take that seriously, right? Nobody in um, the court system is going to take that seriously because they're going to blame Trudy. They're going to blame the victim. They're going to they're going to completely look aside at the fact that this woman is vulnerable and grieving and she has put her trust in somebody. And that person who is uh, she put her trust in is a person of authority in Trudy's mind. And if they're and she's telling her basically, you know, everything's good. So just saying it's dangerous. This is dangerous stuff. OK, let's continue on. It's Hank, right? Hank is your. Uh, I've yeah, read yeah. exposure. I've read Trudy a bunch of times. Hank, um, Hank, Hank says, "Talk to me. What's tr there's something going on?" And I, I want to hold on before I, I do that. Your cousin. You have that cousin, a male cousin, 
something's going on with him. Okay. Is there something going on with him? Well, he's in the process of moving. Yeah. They're building a house, not a house. So he's moving away from me. And is that what's troubling you, that he's moving yeah, away? Yeah, it bothers me a little bit that they're moving. Because when you got on today, Hank said to me, talk to her about the cousin, the male okay. cousin. Uh -huh. yeah. So I'm kind of relieved. I was worried it was health, but that makes sense. But you're upset about it. Yeah, because they're gonna. It's he's right three doors down from me now, and mm -hmm. they decided all of a sudden she wants to build this house, and she's they're leaving. So, yeah, it's like really, it because I see them every single day. Well, you know what you have to do, which is what he told you the last time. You have to make some friends. Yeah, I know, I know. You have to go down to that community. Remember, he talked about the gate. Being mm -hmm. like, he wants you to go to the community. Uh, building yeah, and no, i'm getting more involved with the community definitely so, yeah um are you involved in some kind of drive for children for the holidays are you doing something he's yes. talking about you're doing something he's really proud of that mm -hmm. and and i don't remember the disease that took your sister but he says look and see if there's a a local there where you can you can be involved i don't remember what she had your sister Pebble palsy. Yeah. Okay, okay. So, so so he'd like you to get involved with you know the charity and okay. maybe volunteer work because he says you will have to refill you you you're gonna have free time on your hands. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, and then you're not gonna do well with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, you know he's around you. He keeps you company. Still eating ice cream. <laughs> Love that ice cream. He does. I don't remember the flavor, but oh, I do see vanilla. <laughs> vanilla. He's showing me vanilla. Chocolate's my favorite, so I probably ignored that. But he is showing me ice cream and that he's sitting at, you have a small table in your kitchen. Is there a small table against a wall in your kitchen? Mm -hmm. he's half the table is against the wall. He's showing me that he's sitting at that table eating. And it. I will tell you, it is a hot fudge sundae. Like, he's really going into detail. Okay, so we'll stop again. So I don't know if you caught it or not, but she said, uh, Lady Phyllis says, I was kind of worried it was health. So by saying that, she's saying then everything else is good. It wasn't health. Okay, everything's good. And Trudy in her mind says, cool, I don't have to go to the doctor. I can cancel that visit. Right? Yeah, that's how it works. Okay, so... She does admit, I've met, I've read Trudy multiple times. So she admits that. So that's good on her. So this is called a hot read. Now we're at a point where she's hot reading. She knows her sister. She knows her cousin. She knows all of these family members and what people died of. And even the kind of ice cream that her husband, Hank, liked. All right. Now, so one of the questions that comes up is, does Lady Phyllis know she is not really talking to Hank or does she really think she's talking to Hank or like what's going on? And I can't get into her mind. I mean, she's, she's her own person, but some of the things she says, now, does this sound like entertainment? Does this sound like you interpret it the way you want to interpret it? And that I, you know, no mediumship reading should be ever taken as, you know, uh, anything other than entertainment. Does it sound like this so far? Cause I don't see it. She says, Hank is eating ice cream. He's showing me he's eating ice cream. So what does that come? What does that mean? Is there something going on in Lady Phyllis's mind? She's schizophrenic or whatever, and she's she's associating. I mean, and she's seeing some guy that she thinks his name is Hank, and that he's eating ice cream. Does she think that? Because she just said he is showing me. So what is it like a cartoon drawing? He's showing a picture of himself. Does she see like a hand come up in some a pen drawing? Or is she seeing like a TV screen, like you're watching a video and there is a man sitting there, like a camera's off to the side and he's sitting at a kitchen table, a small kitchen table, and he's eating a hot fudge sundae. Is that what she sees? Like a like there's a camera crew there in the in the afterlife and it's being projected into her brain? What does that mean? 
it doesn't it 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 means again it means whatever lady phyllis wants it to mean so that so that trudy will continue having readings that's all it means it's just made up gobbledygook so now this idea that she can she she sees him sitting at a small table in the kitchen which lots of people have small tables and kitchens and they sit at i mean it's common um and we don't know what other conversations she's had with trudy about possibly what the design of the kitchen looks like i don't know but He's showing me vanilla. He's sitting at a small table eating a hot fudge sundae. Now, that again may not sound like a big deal to you guys out there watching it. But look, I have been told over and over and over again by fans of people like Lady Phyllis that they can, Lady Phyllis cannot solve crimes. She cannot um, find missing bodies. That's not her thing. She can't do it because. There's never an answer, never an answer, or they do it, but nobody knows about it, or the police don't take it seriously. That's, that's about the worst we, most we get. So they say they can't do it. Now, why? If you have the ability to see this woman's husband sitting at a kitchen table, eating a hot fudge sundae, get me? then why would she not have the ability to tell the police and these grieving, desperate families where a body is located out there in the world that they cannot find? Or what happened to, at the last moments, who was it who was responsible for killing the person? Or how did the accident happen? Or, um, you know, something of the sort. Because this is instantaneous. These people are having readings and it's like, okay, I'm in contact with your dead person over Zoom, right? So they don't even have to have a physical connection with the person like we're holding their hands or something. Gone is that. Psychics are lazy now. These psychic mediums are so lazy compared to what it used to be when it started out in the 1880s where they're sitting around with the seance table, holding hands and so on. This is just the next level of mediumship and seance. And it's just the most laziest thing I've ever seen. Okay, let's continue with this. I get a little passionate about it because there's, a, there's an awful lot of crimes out there that need to be solved. There's an awful lot of missing people out there. We would love to know where they are. I mean, let's if, if you have the power to do this, let's go get these things taken care of. I mean, let's go through the missing persons report one after another, after another, after another, and let's get these crimes solved because there's an awful lot of desperate people out there who would really like to know where their loved ones are and what happened to them. But instead, she's busy telling people, telling Trudy about what her husband's eating at the kitchen table. And keep that in mind. Trudy, what's going to happen in this next segment here, just keep put a pin in it <laughs> that's funny yeah but okay. um do you have a question trudy uh, not really no just just trying to keep busy and that's about it getting more i'm getting more involved with the, my i'm on my board with the, and the, the hoa and all that stuff so i'm you know and now i'm getting involved with charity so yeah, he really is pushing the charity work with children, though, specifically with children. And he'd like to see you involved around the holidays doing something, you know, like a, a drive, a toy drive, something. We are. We're doing what they call a parade of trees. And, and it's at, it's going to be, it's a big deal. So it's, it's right. going to be having toys for kids and stuff. He's actually annoyed with your cousin. Okay. He is annoyed. I can see him in that way, yeah. Yeah, yeah. you know, annoyed. Like they have a perfect setup. What are they doing there for? Like I know, it's it's, it's insane. I mean, you're at that age, you don't build a house. I'm sorry, right. it's, and it's right. a lot of activation, and it's like really crazy. Yeah, and and he feels it's like a double loss for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. So he says you're going to have to get my pieces. They're not going to be so happy then. Oh, I know they're not. I know. I know it already. Yeah. She's she's gonna feel cut off over there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I definitely agree. It's a big mistake, I think, you know, but she wants to build her own house. So, so this, 
This is a 20 minute drive from you? It's about, yeah, it's about 20 minutes. Yeah, so you'll drive there. That'll be Oh, something. yeah, and I'll visit. I'll visit. It's just so different than just going and knocking on, you know, right. and it being up every day. Yeah. yeah. Well, he says part of that is good because it's going to force you to step outside of your comfort zone. Uh -huh. and, yeah. And um, uh, were you thinking of taking a painting course? Um, I don't know if I want to do painting. I was thinking of doing something, but okay. So let's stop again. Let's start. Uh, we just have two minutes left in this reading. Okay, the cousins want her to move, and she says no. Right. Um, they want psychic mediums do not want you to go to a licensed grief counselor, because a licensed grief counselor will figure out how best to help you help yourself they will come up with strategies so that you can see when you're starting to fall into that cycle of grief and we're like like lady phyllis is saying you should take these classes and you should be doing this that has to do with uh, helping out some some charity uh, toy drive you know uh, that's advice a friend would give right um, but what's going on is that licensed therapists, grief therapists, they teach you how to see the warning signs that you're about to fall into that will keep you in that cycle of grief. What psychic mediums do is they want to hold you in that grief. They say they're helping, but they're not helping. It's not helping to tell somebody that your house is, this is where your husband's sitting at the table in the kitchen having ice cream and he's watching you and he's constantly advising you because this is where her memories are. And even if Trudy does move somewhere else, even if she does move, will her husband move with her well i assume so but it won't be the same he won't be sitting at the same kitchen table having eating ice cream and watching over her it's not the same feel to it now i know that people say well it's nice to know that my loved one is watching over me and they're and they're uh, advising me and they love me and i'm their soulmate but when you tell people that kind of thing it makes it difficult for them to move on to have new relationships, to make decisions to move, make decisions to take on a new career, to um, have different things happen to you in life, especially having new relationships with new people. It's very difficult to find another person, let alone find another person that's going to be okay with the fact that your ex-husband, your your dead husband has been watching you, watching over you, and you're going to be taking your advice from your your dead husband, <laughs> you know, it's it's or your mother or your child or whomever it is. It's not help to keep a person in that into that world of grief. I've I have readings that I've I have videos of these where the psychic will tell the medium will tell the person, you know he's glad that you still have your his hat hanging up on the wall and and don't give away his all of his clothes and he he likes that you put the his shoes under the bed and on and on and on don't give away his guitar it keeps people in the cycle of grief they can't move along they can't move on death is all around us death is an, is a part of life and being held in that one spot is cruel we have to be able to adjust. We're all going to die. And do you want your family members to just shut off and just like, oh, mom's dead. I better not move any objects in the house. I better not change the color of the room. I better not rearrange the furniture. I better not sell the house. I can't get rid of her clothes and so on. Do you really want that for your family? Because this is the kind of what they want them to do because moving on means moving away from the psychic and having they heal and they're not going to move on to doing the things they do now this last little bit i'm going to back it up just a little bit where she asks her about the painting now this is interesting so when i blurred this i only blurred a section of it because i wanted to have you guys be able to see what's going on in the background 
there's a, a video also on this playlist that I, um, it should be right underneath this one. And it's where Lady Phyllis in the same reading, same series of readings, um, that she is um, reading a friend of mine who is there under false pretenses. And she uses the name Diane. Behind Diane, Diane are all these art photos, just beautiful works of art behind her, lots of bright colors. And she tells Diane that, you know, are you interested in painting? You, are you an artist? That kind of thing. And she's going to say the same thing to Trudy right now. And I think free association, she's seeing this painting behind Trudy. And it's just like, I got to say something else. I guess I'll say something about painting because she sees the painting. So I think that's what's going on psychologically. She's just letting it come out and this is what she's saying so you can see that video right underneath this video um if you'd like it's part of this playlist but let's go back to this and let's see where this goes with the painting um i don't know if i want to do painting i was thinking of doing to go back a little bit more i didn't go is it? it's just so different than just going and knocking on the, you know right. the end of every day yeah he says part of that is good because it's going to force you to step outside of your comfort zone. Uh -huh. And yeah. um, were you thinking of taking a painting course? Um, I don't know if I want to do painting. I was thinking of doing something, but I wasn't sure. But yeah. I, look at it, I was looking at it, yeah. Yeah, he showed me painting. He wants you to do it. Oh, okay. He says, Trudy, you, you got mm -hmm. to do it. Yeah. You know? and I have, yeah, I do have a question. She wants to give me the listing on the house, and I don't know if I want it. <laughs> it's like really crazy. I'm like fighting it. For you to sell it? Mm-hmm. He says, don't touch it. Okay. Don't touch it. Yeah, because it's and really bothering me. If I, I, I knew as soon as I saw your face, you told me, look at my Trudy. Um, if, if you're going to do anything's going to go sour on this deal, they're going to blame you, and it'll cost you more. That's what I figured. Yeah. yeah he's, follow your gut. Okay. Because right. my gut's like, telling me not to take it. Okay. Uh, well, he's in full agreement with you. Okay. Your father is also. He's also shaking his head. Don't touch it. He said, okay. you'll lose more. If it goes bad, they're going to blame you. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I, I feel like it's not going to be smooth. Okay. He's going to buy it. And maybe the, and the truth is, you know, you, if you read a newspaper, you know right now we're entering a tough financial time. So if you're going to get involved and if it's not an all cash deal, if anything goes wrong, because what they're showing me is that papers are going to get done and then undone. So maybe they're going to sell it and then the mortgage is going to fall through. Uh -huh. so I feel like it's not going to be a clean deal and you don't want to get in the middle of that. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. Okay. No. Yeah. Okay. No, it's fine. All right. So you saw about the painting as, as I said, that there's this painting behind her. So he's telling you, he wants you to start taking painting classes. Okay. Um, and this is where the listing in the house. And she finally Trudy admits that she has something she wants to ask. And that what she wants to ask is they, I assume the wife of her cousin who is building a house somewhere else, 20 minutes away. And, you know, Trudy's like upset about this because she has been going over every day and knocking on their door to see these people. And maybe that's why they're moving 20 minutes away. Uh, <laughs> and they're tired of having somebody who's just so needy all the time. You know, it's, we don't know Trudy and Trudy will never see this video unless of course somebody from Lady Phyllis shares it with her because there's no way you can identify her other than her first name. And that's probably not even her old first name. Um, anyway, I mean, it sounds like a nickname to me. Maybe her name is Trudy. I don't know. So she visits these cousins every day and they have moved away and they want her to sell the house. Now, keep this in mind. Lady Phyllis on her website says there will be, they should no reading should be interpreted as medical, financial, legal, or psychological, or career advice. Now, I'm going to pass on the painting thing because that's not exactly career advice. But 
This is legal advice and financial advice. So she's telling her, do not sell and do not. And your father says, do not sell. So your husband and your father are telling you, do not sell. It's going to come back and bite you. Now, this thing, I'm they're showing me papers. They're going to be undone. So so is it a is this going to happen? I mean, what, what do you mean? They're showing me papers that are undone. Is are they saying this is good? This is inevitable, or are they saying if she goes ahead with selling the house, it will be undone? And I'm showing you what it would look like if it was undone. And this video was recorded. This is from Christmas of 2023, I believe. So financially, the world is actually doing really well in the United States. I mean, it's a great time. Interest rates are lowering, but if you know. This woman is giving her advice uh, to se not sell her house. Why? Because she wants to keep her in grief. She wants to keep her in that house. She wants to keep everything the same. That's why. Now, she has no business, even though she knows Trudy. I mean, they have readings together often. Even though she knows Trudy, why... Why is she giving her this advice in that it might be very good advice for her? Don't you think her cousins who lived, you know, two doors down or whatever, who see her every day might be giving her better advice than this medium that she sees? Who do you think has has more um, uh, care for Trudy? If they're telling her to sell it. Maybe they're trying to say sell it and move in with us or move closer to move close to us or, you know, wh what? Because we don't know if Trudy is living in a house that's like two stories with, um, you know, four or five bedrooms and um, in a dangerous neighborhood or that it is, you know, what we don't know. Is this a place where Trudy is just like a just occupying one small area of the house is she is she living a healthy vibrant life maybe she should be going into um assisted living uh, from what i understand people have an amazing life once they go into these places where they're able to buy uh, or or pay rent for um you know a community a swimming pool tennis courts knitting classes painting classes some of, some of these places are amazing. And maybe that is the best idea for Trudy. She'll have somebody around. She'll have uh, better meals. Um, she'll have somebody to care for her and her house or, you know, her apartment or whatever it is, condo. Or maybe it's to move in with her, her, her family members. I don't know. But the point is, is that neither does Phyllis. And the people who should be advising her are not her dead husband and her dead father, who Phyllis is not in contact with. Come on now, we know that. So this is giving financial advice to this woman that is probably dangerous. Oh no, here comes the cat. <laughs> so um, he says, don't touch it. I mean, Phyllis didn't take any time whatsoever to, to think that out. All right, so let's get to the last 28 seconds of this video. Pay attention to the very, very, very last thing she's going to say. Yeah, Hamilton. Yeah. I'll see yeah. you tomorrow night. Yes, you'll see me tomorrow night. <laughs> All right, thank you. Make sure you go on the Facebook because we put yeah, up. Yeah, I saw that to read to see other people. Yeah, right. I saw that. Okay. There's homework. Trudy is in our class, where, uh, our mediumship class. So. Hey, Kathy, we're going to do you next. All right. So you caught that, right? So Trudy is in her mediumship class. So Trudy is going into the same cycle that Lady Phyllis fell into, where you start getting the classes, you start getting the mediumship, um, you know, mentoring, you pay extra for all of these kinds of things. You buy the books Poor needy kitty. Talk about a needy person. Um. And you, if you caught it, she says, okay, Trudy, thanks. I'll see you tomorrow. And Trudy says, yes, you'll see me tomorrow. So how often does she get these readings from, from Lady Phyllis? It's hard to move on when you're constantly getting readings from somebody who's giving you advice. 
I mean, Trudy didn't even have anything at first to say that she wanted to um, talk about. No, I don't have any questions. It only took, it was a little bit later when she finally got into, yeah, there is something wrong. And I'm really upset that my cousins are moving away and they want me to list this house and they want me to, to sell it and move. And I, and I don't want to do it. I feel, I feel funny about it, but I don't want to, I don't want to do it. So what is she going to tell her cousins? Oh, I decided not to, because I, I have uh, a medium told me that my husband and my dad said, it's not a good idea that it's, I'm going to, I'm going to lose my shirt on this and it's not a good idea. Is she really going to tell her cousins that? And her cousins are going to go like, okay, <laughs> Undue influence, right? Isn't that a legal term that says somebody has undue influence over you and is helping you make financial, medical, or legal decisions? There is evidence of it right there. Okay, so give me a break about this disclaimer that she's got on her website. This woman, Trudy, fully believes that Lady Phyllis is in contact with her dead husband and her father and is giving her advice through Lady Phyllis. And she's not get, able to contact, you know, I guess these mediumship classes she's taking with Lady Phyllis aren't working because Lady, because uh, Trudy doesn't seem to be able to, to have contact with these people. Now, this wasn't a lot of money. So I think, I can't even remember we paid under $50 to attend this workshop. I mean, this uh, reading. So $50 to me and to Trudy might not be a lot of money, but $50 once or twice a week. That can really, $50 or $20, that can really add up pretty quick, especially when you're, when it's keeping you from moving on. And I have been in a position, and I'm sure there's people out there who's watching this right now that, you know, an extra $50 a week or $20 a week can make a real difference. And if you're going to be able to have um, a better quality of life, there's been times where, you know, you're really scraping by. It's, it's, it, it can really mean something to you. So the money isn't the big deal as far as that. I mean, it adds up. It's just this influence that this psychic medium has on Trudy, who we can tell is a lovely person. And she's alone in this world other than her cousin and his, her, her cousin's wife. It seems like she's completely alone. Her sister has died of cerebral palsy. Her parents obviously are dead. Her husband is dead, except he's still eating ice cream in the kitchen. And advising her, it's she doesn't seem to be making friends well. She seems like somebody who's probably still in grief. And it, it probably has been quite a while, you know, at least a year, maybe longer that she's been apart from her husband. He's gone. So um, people ask me often, what's the harm? Well, I think you can clearly see in this seven minute reading that there's a lot of harm, especially when the medium isn't really aware that they're somebody's going to analyze their video, which I find odd because I was on this video. I was live. I was watching this live and she couldn't pick up on that. And that the money that I used to buy this reading and that for Diane was money that it came from James Randi. How do you not, how do you, how do you know things like your husband wants you to start painting, taking painting classes but you can't tell that there's other people on the call. There wasn't that many of us. Um, and the money was supplied by James Randi. How do you not see that? Or if you don't know it was James Randi, you would at least be able to pick on some kind of, you know, <laughs> that this this is a person who is a huge critic of, of psychic mediums. And why can't you get in touch with James Randi? Come on now. <laughs> Don't you dare. I've had, we have seen mediums try to say that that they were in touch with James Randi. It's so stupid. Well, if James Randi was really able to communicate with the dead, he would be saying, hey, here's the evidence. I can prove it. Let's some, solve some crimes or whatever. But no. All right. So I hope you found this interesting. I'm going to be doing more of these videos on uh, Lady Phyllis. And each time that I do so, I hope that you guys will comment and share the videos and we'll um, talk about um, how she's not adhering to her disclaimer. I think that's dangerous. And I hope somebody pays attention and possibly, you know, um, 
we'll have a talk with the lady Phyllis and say, you know, not a great idea. From what I understand, she's she's um getting more involved with Thomas John, which is a real shame. Um, I think he's invited her to be part of some endeavor he's got going. And uh, I'll show that to you in another video. This is already way, way too long. So thank you for everyone. Um, I appreciate it. I feel like I'm not alone when I do these videos and able to, um, you're obviously interested if you're watching all the way to the end of this video. And as difficult as these things are, I think we really need to have somebody who witnesses what's actually going on and reporting back to society what is actually happening in these small private readings or smaller readings. They're not private. I mean, like I said, she mailed me, emailed me the entire session of two hours. Um, I have everybody's reading. And so um, not just my reading. Um, real shame. A real shame. I wish we were having better relationships with people instead of having to rely on these people who want to keep us keep us back in our grief. Thank you, everyone.